So the idea is that first you're trying to capture people, but the rate at which you do that is one forty-seven hundredth of a time. In recent days, though, there has been intense focus on whether secret targeted killing by our militarized CIA uh, is also a program that is allowed to target people who have U.S. citizenship. On Monday, NBC News' Michael Isakoff broke the news on this show that he had unearthed a 16-page white paper spelling out some of the legal reasoning behind why our government thinks it is okay to target Americans specifically for killing. That was Monday night. Then last night, the administration announced that the Justice Department classified memo that was the basis of that white paper, the actual legal advice to the president from his lawyers, that would be released to the Intelligence Committee. They'd been asking for it forever. They were finally going to release it. It seemed like the pressure and the attention ahead of this confirmation hearing today had finally brought about some real momentum toward transparency, that we would at least let the Senate committee in charge of overseeing this part of our government finally oversee this part of our government. That's what it seemed like. And then this happened. So it was encouraging last night when the president called and indicated that effective immediately he would release the documents necessary for senators to understand the full legal analysis of the president's authority to conduct the targeted killing of an American. What the president said is a good first step towards ensuring the openness and accountability that's important. Since last night, however, I have become concerned that the Department of Justice is not following through with the President's commitment just yet. Eleven United States Senators asked to see any and all legal opinions, but when I went to read the opinions this morning, it is not clear that that is what was provided. They didn't get it? The Justice Department didn't hand over what the committee asked for, that we all reported last night the committee was going to get this morning because the president had okayed it. They're still holding out. Joining us now is Oregon Democratic Senator Ron Wyden, who has repeatedly asked the Obama administration about our drone policy. Uh, Senator Wyden, it's good to see you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me again. Did you not, in fact, get uh, what you had asked the president to give you and that you thought you would be getting this morning based on your conversation uh, with the president last night? Rachel, it's not clear. Hmm. The fact is, and I went in uh, first thing this morning, I was able to read some information that was helpful. I'm just not convinced yet that it is the full legal analysis that we need to do to do vigorous oversight. What today was really about is, of course, it was a nomination hearing for John Brennan, but it ultimately was a question of upholding our system of checks and balances in government. And I think that system is out of whack these days, and we've got to do some more for transparency and accountability and getting those checks and balances back. In terms of of this specific program that you've been asking about the legal advice for, specifically targeting Americans, uh, at at least specifically targeting one American who we know was killed, Anwar al-Awlaki, who's a prominent member of al-Qaeda who was killed in Yemen in 2011, are, are you asking about it specifically because you believe that action might have been illegal or the program that does this might be an illegal program? Or are you withholding judgment about its legality? You just believe that they should have to disclose more of their legal reasoning. I believe to keep that system of checks and balances, the Congress has got to do vigorous oversight. That's what the charge, Rachel, is to the Intelligence Committee. It calls for vigilant oversight, and we can't do that if we're being kept in the dark on fundamental matters like the legal analysis for uh, these targeted killings. And I think, as you indicated uh, on the clip I heard, this is something that Americans have a right to know. They have a right to know when their government believes it's allowed to kill them. And I think it's time, and one of the things that was uh, encouraging about the president's call last night is to have a national discussion about how we can shore up our system of checks and balances and bring the public into it. In terms of... um I guess in terms of your overall efforts to try to pry more information out of the administration on this in order to do oversight, as you're saying, when you have seen information that they have released, even though they initially didn't want to release it, when you finally get that information, do you feel like, oh, I see why they didn't want to release it? I see how a leak of this information might be operationally dangerous or might compromise something that we legitimately should keep secret. Or when you see that information, do you think, you know what, they shouldn't be keeping as much secret as they are? What I'd say by way of summarizing is I think what I've seen is a step in the right direction. 
but I'm not convinced that I've seen everything. And in fact, if there is legal analysis out there that is central to how the law is being officially interpreted, we need to see that. You and I have talked in the past about something I call secret law. You know, the law is supposed to be public today. It's different than protecting sources and methods. The law is the official interpretation of the government. It ought to be public, and too often the interpretation has been kept secret, and that's what's wrong. Do you think, though, in terms of what the president has been reluctant to release to you on the Intelligence Committee, do you think that he has a case to make? Do you, do you see his side of the argument that it might be dangerous to release this information even just to the Senate? Is there an argument to be made on that side? The, the president, of course, is the commander-in-chief, and the Constitution vests in the president these enormous powers, but they are not unchecked. There are limits, and that's what the president and I talked about on the phone. He has some ideas that I think are worth talking about in terms of this national conversation about how to strike a strong balance, a, a strong set of checks and balance in a very different era. This is a time when the lines are blurring between the military and intelligence. Technology has, of course, changed so dramatically. I think it's time to walk through how to come up with a modern system System of checks and balances. That's what I call upholding the Constitution. Senator Wyden, you asked a question in writing to John Brennan ahead of this hearing that uh, quite literally has kept me awake at night. It has caused me insomnia thinking about it because of the blunt terms in which you put it and because I hadn't thought about it before. You asked, should an American who is targeted for killing by the, our government have the opportunity to surrender? And you asked John Brennan that today. He responded that any American who is a member of al-Qaeda should know that we are with al-Qaeda and anybody who's in al-Qaeda can surrender at any time and thereby eliminate their risk of being killed by the United States. Were you satisfied with that answer? I wasn't. And here's what's at stake. There are certainly instances where an American takes up arms against the United States, where I think it's important in order to protect the country to use lethal force. But I can tell you, the government makes mistakes. And sometimes the intelligence is flawed, and sometimes they get uh, the wrong person. And the reason I asked uh, that question is I think those kinds of issues ought to be part of uh, this debate and ought to be part of a system of checks and balances. Oregon Democratic Senator Ron Wyden, I know it's been a very, very long and taxing day for you. Thank you for your time tonight, sir. Thank you for having me. Thanks. All right. Um, it took longer than scheduled uh, for this riveting hearing on Capitol Hill today to get started. It took longer to get started than they expected um, for a very notable reason. That and other man-made delays in Washington. Coming up. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. We are for free education. We do not give up. Expect surprises. Subscribe.